I love books. Books have been an important part of my life, and I couldn't imagine where I would be if I wasn't taught that love of reading from an early age. Really, I love stories in general. I love the worlds they create, the characters you discover, the lessons and views they impart, whether directly or indirectly. That's why I've been doing this show. It's that love that has been letting me do this for over four years. But here's the thing. I didn't create the show because of books. I created it because of all things, a short animated film. My mom and I were watching a presentation of nominated short films for the 84th Oscars in 2011. I actually can't remember much about the films shown. I remember liking most of what I saw, but most right now are just a fog. I do remember one about a chicken getting chased by a zombie. That was weird. But there was one short that stood out from all the rest. One short that spoke to my mom and I on such a personal level that it would plant the seed to where I am now. This film is a love letter to books, an endearment to the written word, a celebration to bibliophiles, and a testament to what a good book can do. This short... This short is the reason I do this. And I'll explain why. Strap in, folks. I'm about to break my own channel by doing a film analysis. This would go well. So the story of the fantastic flying books of Mr. Morris Lesmore, Lord if that ain't a mouthful, is about a lover of the written word losing that love, but rediscovers why he loves literature while adding his own story to its long legacy. It was directed by William Joyce and Brandon Odenberg, and this film even won the Oscar of that year. It beat out Pixar, you guys. That's kind of a big deal in 2011. We open with our main character, Morris, surrounded by his books as he puts down his joys, sorrows, all that he knew, and everything he hopes for in the world. Though, not to be nosy, but I pause to see what he's writing about, and... He's questioning why people care that the weasel goes pop after going around the mulberry bush. I don't want to be mean, this is a first draft after all, and they use the music from that rhyme as the film's soundtrack. pretentious, right? Questioning old nursery rhymes like figuring them out will bring forth the answers of the universe. It makes you wonder. Wonder. Why did the old man play knick-knack on my thumb? How did the cow jump over the moon? Or the dish run away with a spoon? How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Anonymous. Okay, that's enough of that. Let's get back on track, because Katrina just happened! <laughs> so one of the things I love about this film is seeing all the different elements used to create this story, and this scene here shows the most obvious. The short was made by Moonbot Studios, which upon a quick Google search, shows it is located in Louisiana, and you can tell they use New Orleans, based on the buildings, to literally spelling it out. And it's no surprise to see a Louisiana-based company take one of the worst natural tragedies that happened in the state and use it to create the inciting incident of the story. Which also shows the other main influence where Morris's character design and movements are clearly based on Buster Keaton. Now, unless you know film history like me, I'm sure some of you don't even know who that is. We don't have the time here to talk about it, but I would recommend you watch every frame of paintings video about him, because seriously, if you don't know who Keaton is, you are missing out on one of cinema's most influential actors. Which to me is an absolute delight when we get to this shot. Like this, this right here is something he would do, if he could. Keaton would totally do this Wizard of Oz house stunt, and as a film dork, I just love it. But now to really get back on track. Moore survives the storm, but upon looking at his book, he finds it blank and he himself is at a loss for words to describe what just happened to him. Here he was, just doing his thing, when life threw him a curveball, and now he finds everything he thought he knew to be gone. What else is anyone supposed to do after that, but to wander aimlessly? His colorful life has no purpose anymore, just scattered pages with no meaning or context. But then, an angel appears before him. <laughs> 
Morris is amazed by what he sees and tries to get his book to fly too. Only it can't. It's an empty book with nothing to lift it up. The woman upon seeing this sends down her favorite book. Some kind of Humpty Dumpty picture book that... Yeah, I would make that face too because seeing a book wave to you just breaks all rules of everything. Then again, Mission Earth is a thing so I've read weirder. Morris follows the book to a library of other flying books and... Yeah, I know that look. That's the look I get whenever I go into a bookstore. I'm one of those guys who can spend an entire afternoon doing nothing else, but observe shelf upon shelf of books, whether from a store, library, or used. Which, by the way, I have to say used bookstores are my favorite places to go to. They are filled with so many old and unusual books you can't find anywhere else. You never know what you will discover. Wait. Oh dear God. Anyway, Morris takes a liking to the place. The books like him, and now he's a custodian to them. This is the beginning of Morris's journey to rediscover his love, which really ignites when Morris's attention is drawn to an old book that has seen better days. He works to put it back together, but when he's finished, the book still remains lifeless. But then he's told that the only way a book can live is if you read it, which, yeah. A book isn't meant to just lay around to gather dust. They are to be read because they have stories to tell. Which leads to one of my favorite scenes in the whole short. This scene here is something all my fellow bookworms know. How often we can get lost in a good book where nothing else matters but the words on the page. But it also highlights how great stories can come from anywhere. Let me ask you. How many times have you disregarded a book just based on how old it is? Or what genre it's categorized as? Or just cause the cover didn't catch your eye? We've all done it. I've done it. Growing up, I was obsessed with fantasy and sci-fi, and anything else outside of that was not worth my time. But I believe this scene showcases that power a good story can be, regardless of its age, genre, or co- or cover. Not to mention all the emotions books can give you, from shock, surprise, anger, joy, and sadness. Oh, and the book Morris is reading is From the Earth to the Moon by Jules Verne's. At least that's what Wikipedia says and now I think I want to read it. But what does all that mean in the short? Well, after reading the book, it gets Morris's mind going again. If an old book can make him feel like that, why can't he? So he goes back to his book and writes. He writes all of his joys, his sorrows, all that he knew, and everything that he hoped for. Giving out books to bring color back into people's lives. As the days turn to weeks, weeks into months, then years, till he's an old man who reached the last page. It was time for Morris to move on. As he leaves, several books fly around him to revert him back to his youth, and take him off like the girl he met so long ago. Now. I'm going to give you my interpretation of this moment. I believe these books represent the most important books that impacted Morris's life. They were the books that informed him, entertained him, and challenged him. That is something I believe because I believe the entertainment we consume matters. How it can bring to light aspects of life we don't always experience. I mean, it was a furry book about a gay otter and fox that made me confront my sexual identity. These books matter because they lift us to greater heights than we could have imagined if we didn't experience them. Which of course means the woman Morris saw was actually a ghost and maybe Mother Goose, but that doesn't really matter. Because after Morris is carried off to the great unknown, his friends go back sad till they find... The book Morris wrote, Flying, his contribution to the world for all to read. Just as a little girl walks in, the book flies to her, she sits down, and starts to read, to be inspired by Morris's story, and to maybe one day create her own. So what does that all mean to this show? So after I saw this short, I was amazed by it. I even cried at the end. I still cry at the end. It spoke to me on a very personal level, and it helped plant the seed of making this show. I've been watching a lot of internet review shows from Nostalgia Critic, Lindsay Ellis, Browse Hell High, Linkara, basically all the Channel Awesome stuff. 
and through there, I started to think I could try to do a similar show, but with books. They didn't really have one, or if they did, they weren't featured as much. My takeaway of the short was that books have the ability to inspire, and I want to share that with the world. Looking at books you've heard of to books you may not have even looked at. I know most people will only look at a certain genre or subject, but I just want to talk about books, whether it be fiction or non-fiction, fantasy to mystery, books for young and old, and everything in between. Some of my happiest moments is whenever I get a comment about how you got to read a book you might have never read if not for my show. That's what I always want to do. Show that all stories matter, to look at how well a story works, and to hopefully get you to check out something you may have never thought of, cause... God damn it! Books are awesome! Note to self, wear a darker shirt so no one can see how much you sweat because it gets hot in there. Also shut up, it gets hot in there. That was the inspiration the fantastic flying books of Mr. Morris Lesmore imparted on me. It's why I wore that costume and this hat. It's why even with no real equipment, I just put my nose to the grindstone and made my first batch of bookworm reviews and... Hello, internet. Oh, God. I just... Oh. Oh, no, 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 no. The cringe. The cringe is real. The cringe is so real. Yeah, I had a lot of growing to do. And I'm still growing. If you saw my last review, I mentioned I've been thinking about quitting. I've been doing this for about four years, which, my god, I've been doing this for four years. But after thinking it over a lot, I actually now want to recommit to this crazy project, try some new things with the format, and grow more as a creator. I know it's been a month since I did anything, but I want to get back to what I do because this show has been one of the craziest things I've ever done and I'm so happy with what I've done in the past, how I've grown, and the future that still awaits me. I mean, I just recently discovered BookTube. I didn't know there was such a thing as BookTube. I knew there were other book reviewers because it's not a new idea, but seriously, how did I go four years and not once know about these guys? Seriously, I'm having a Patrick moment right now, cause seriously, who are you people? But yeah, that's more or less why I wanted to talk about this short. It's made me want to do the show in the first place, and re-examining it has made me discover why I still want to do this. Check it out when you can, there's also a picture book, and let me know what you think. So, don't worry guys, the bookworm will still be around, and we'll push forward by looking at... FNAF. So, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, people of all ages, my name is David Popovich, aka The Bookworm, and welcome to Bookworm Reviews. Sit back and relax. Until next time, have a nice day. Oh, and for those of you wondering, this is my partner's cat, Morty. He doesn't like it when I lock him out when I record these episodes, so you might see him around now and again. Say hi to the internet, Morty. Hi, hi. <laughs> no.